Alex the car doctor back again guys this one is for all the mechanics out here please we have to do better as a people as a mechanic people this what I found on this vehicle is very disturbing I had to make a video about it let's get this thing racked up and go through the diagnostic process together guys today's patient is a 2010 Chevy Tahoe I really like these very popular trucks in my opinion the owner's complaint, the patient owner's complaint, is that the fuel economy is horrible and power issues. I guess it doesn't have the power that it used to. So the first thing I like to do is just look at the check engine light. <clears throat> um, and all I'm seeing is a lot of upstream oxygen sensor issues. Bank one, sensor one, that's an upstream. Bank two, Sensor one, that's another upstream. And if I look at the pendings along with the currents, because the pendings are always gonna match the currents. If you're just doing a generic scan, because I'm in the generic portion of the scan tool, um, these are the ones I'm focusing on. So I'm gonna lift it up. I'm gonna show you what I found. Like I said, very disturbing. So let's go on up with it. Then I'll tell you the story. <laughs> So the first thing I did was look at the exhaust and what I saw was pretty bad. Guys, just take a minute and look. Focus in on this area. Tell me what you guys see. All right, for the people that don't know. Wait, do I know? Do you know? That's a spaceship. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what people would do if the catalytic converters are reading bad, they will space the rear oxygen sensors. This is not legal and this is not the proper way to do things. Um, now, if it's your vehicle and your personal vehicle, yeah, by all means, do what you wanna do with your vehicle. I'm gonna get to the disturbing part. Now, what you don't supposed to see is spaces on the front oxygen sensors. This is throwing off the fueling of the vehicle. The car's computer relies heavily on the upstream oxygen sensors. If the oxygen, upstream oxygen sensors are not within the exhaust stream, the car can't maintain the proper fuel to air ratio. The downstream oxygen sensors are basically tattletales. They quality control checks for the people that don't go at home. All it does is tell the cat, I mean, tell the computer that the cats are reading clean. And it's like this on both sides. This wire's all twisted. Oh my God. Can you see that? Oh, it's super cute. Yes, that like is. Like a hairbrush. Yeah, that is horrible. And another big spacer up here. Um, I can, You're not gonna be it. It's another kinked wire. Oh man, this wire is all twisted. This is probably why, um, this is probably why that they damaged the oxygen sensor because they twisted the wire so bad. And they don't look of quality either. I have to pull it off to see what type it is, but looking at it, I don't see any markings on it. Let me see. Oh, it is a quality oxygen sensor. They're Denzos. They just destroyed Denzos. Um, you can destroy oxygen sensors using spacers as well if you don't do it properly. Now, the messed up part about this, guys, I'm coming for mom and pop shop shops this time. Yes, mom and pop shop, just like myself. This shop named Tarkus Auto, um, not too far from here. What, what, what area, sweetie? Jonesboro. Jonesboro area, Jonesboro, Georgia. Tarkus Automotive sold this lady some cats. Told them that they Hold were- on, So did they yeah. put cats They on put them? cats. They look like some eBay um, stuff. Told this lady they OE. First off, they're leaking. Uh, when I first crunk it up, initially driving it in here, I heard bad exhaust leak. I smelt exhaust fumes. So all together, not safe. Exhaust fumes can leak out from right here, enter the cab of the vehicle and cause carbon drowsiness. Monoxide. Yes, carbon monoxide is a silent killer, guys. Even if you don't smell nothing, it still can cause drowsiness or sleepiness while you're on the road. So these people's life is at danger at this point because of incompetent mechanic work. Um, 
But they did put cats on it, but they look like they straight off of eBay. You can tell that the well quality is just not of quality. When it comes to GM cats, GM is real funny. You pretty much have to put OE from the dealership uh, cats on this truck or you're gonna have problems. So the story went something like this. Lady paid a whole bunch of money for the catalytic converters being replaced. They gave it back to her. The check engine light came on. She brought it back. I think she said they had her car for about a month. And I'm assuming that's when they did that junky stuff with the spacers. Um, got the vehicle back. She noticed that the fuel economy was crap. Um, just wasn't happy with the car. Wasn't performing well. None of that. And um, I think a family member told her about me and now it's here getting looked at the proper way um so i'm gonna have to sell her two upstream o2 sensors sell her the correct cats because that's not gonna cut it <clears throat> um and yeah make sure everything is done properly because <laughs> that's not it so i'm gonna finish up my courtesy inspection y'all come on and join the ride so it doesn't matter why i start but since i'm back here I'm gonna touch everything like I always do. Look at the bushings. Now a lot of shops do this just so they could sell you things, but okay. I do it's it really to make sure, make sure it's, it's safe. safe. Yes. <laughs> Safety is my key thing. And we don't want to miss something and they go out and wheel yeah. come off. So it does have brand new brakes in the rear. So that's got that going for it. Shad, you need anything? We got an oil change up front. All right. Oh, Tariq. <laughs> <laughs> I see some oil leaks, wetness around here. I don't know if it's a leak or a seep. Yes, there is a difference. A seep is a slow process of a leak. A leak is something that you can physically see dripping. Um, but I always tell people, let's start from the top on down. So I'm checking the top to make sure there's no valve cover gasket leaks. I see a very small seat, but I don't think it'll, yeah, very small seat. It's really hard to tell. I'll have to clean it up and do a proper diagnostic on this to make sure, well, not make sure to find the leak. But I can tell you guys, from my experience, these oil cooler block off plates and oil cooler uh, lines where it bolts into the oil pan down here, they they're, that's a common issue. That's a coming leak point. So I'm definitely going to recommend that. Um, I, someone just put brakes. And I don't know who put brakes on this car. But what? Tear uh, or something. My eyes are watering. Got allergies? Uh, yeah. I'm, um, whoever put these brakes on, let's take a look at the front. No, this one is worse. Worse. <laughs> so... We'll put these brakes on it, it'll pad slap. Because if I feel, rub my hand up against the rotor, it's very grooved. That's not good. Um, meaning if I flip these brake pads over, they're gonna have little slants in them. Um, they should have resurfaced the rotors or replaced the rotors. Let's move along to the, move on to the ball joints. So I like to do this test right here. have movement in my can you hear that mm -hmm. so I have play in my lower ball joint and let's check the upper one this is the best way I found to check any type of ball joints that one good That one's not. Feel a slight bit of play on that one. Um, so I'm definitely gonna recommend both lower ball joints and one upper control arm because 
most of the time they're not serviceable. These ball joints are not serviceable on, on suspension components like that. Um, they just sell it as one piece. So I think that pretty much wraps up down here. I'm gonna go ahead and lower it and, and look at the top area. Let's just take one last look at this, this garbage guys. Just, just a shame, man. Horrible. No, no, it's just, it's the lying. It's the, yeah. what's the word I'm looking Deception. Very. De man, if he was going to put spaces on there, he should have just said that to her. Like, hey, the cat's on here. Well, she's going to have to get them from the dealership. I'm going to tell you guys right now, it's $2,700. Expensive. From Sheesh. GM, right, Shane? 27 $2,700. The cats. For both. I don't know. In the foul. Yeah. Meow. Meow. Yeah, right, right. Ooh, that's so nice. Oh, yeah, I love this truck. Yeah, I've never seen this truck before. The diesel. He said, You guys did such a good job on it the first time. I had to bring it back. <laughs> oh, man, you have to come in the house, sweetie. One fun fact about Alex, he don't know names and faces, but he know cars. Yeah, I do know he cars. He know you buy your car only. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. People say, you know me, right? You remember me? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just scanning over the area. Um, definitely have a valve cover gasket seat. It's not a leak. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but it is some wetness going on up and through here. You know when you have some type of oil seepage because dirt is attracted to oil and it'll start getting real grimy around the the bleeding area. Let's use that term. <laughs> um, the AC compressor belt is starting to show some small dry rot cracks. I'm not too, it's not too bad, but I am gonna recommend an AC, I mean the AC compressor belt. Um, see a transmission cooler line that's starting to seep i'm trying to i'm short it, it, <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's really hard to get a good angle on it i'm just kind of just calling out stuff um they just have to take my word for it. it's not nothing too serious unless nah. we do the work and take it off and then they'll be able to now this transmission looks, looks great check that out guys that's how your transmission is supposed to look um it's supposed to look like a uh, reddish tint. Um, so she's been keeping up with her transmission fluid service. That's rarely seen in this industry. Most people forget all about it. So the next thing I need to do is see what this lady want to do. But um, I guess will we keep filming or? Well, we just go call a customer. And I like to leave those conversations, you know, privacy, you know, yeah. for the customer. So. Everything so. ain't for you two people. <laughs> so she approved everything but the catalytic converters, which I understand because whew, how much is them things, sweetie, from the dealership? Twenty seven. Something oh, like yeah, twenty seven hundred. <laughs> we mentioned it before. In the video. Yeah, um, the valve cover is already done. Um, I'm working on the lower ball joints, getting ready to change out the upper control arm. I kind of created her a little treatment plan to bring everything back up to par. Now, guys, I don't understand this. A little off topic here. Why would you want to mess over a good customer? Like, apparently this is a lady that care for her vehicle and will spend good money. Just tell her exactly what she needs. She probably would have got the correct cats from the get-go. You wouldn't have been whirling in circles trying to do janky stuff. It's like, I don't understand. This lady, this is her second truck she brought here. Her... Um, mom's car is currently here for repair. These are good customers. And I get people like this all the time. Other shops just, other shops, screw them over. They come here and I'm like, well, really you need to do this. And they was like, wow, they were so focused on this. I'm like, yeah, they'll do that. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just don't get it. I, I don't Can't know. count people's pockets. You don't yeah. know what they got. So very strange. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let it down because... I wanted to just show you my guys, <laughs> one of my guys that I had do the valve covers. He did an amazing job on the cleaning it up. It looks very shiny and I want to kind of showcase that. It looks nice. 
All right, check this valve cover out. He got it looking brand new. Guess he want a little OCD on it. Um, it's, it's right here. If you, I think you can see the other side a lot better. So, yeah, about the same. Can't really see it. But he got it all nice and oh, shiny. shiny. Yeah. That's how you do a job, people. Right? You working on people vehicle, clean it up. Uh, I always tell my guys, after you work in the area, make sure you clean up after yourself. Not only the shop around you, but the work area where you feel it. Because the main thing is, if you leave that residual oil left over and you take it on the test drive, you don't know if it's leaking or not. Like, oh, some people will wrap it up saying, oh, it's done. That leak was already right there. Just clean it up. That way, when you take it on a test drive, you be like, nope, I know that went right there. Let me reinvestigate. And it could be a gasket that's not seated properly. It could be a defective gasket. Stuff happens. So, very important to clean up your area anytime you work on something. That's my little two cents. I kind of went off sidetracked. But I want you, I want you guys to really know uh, uh, the proper ways in this business. That's the proper way. As the shop manager, I want to say I'm still working on them, on cleaning up the floor when they're done but uh they're work in progress i'd rather for them to do great work here yeah. and we worry about the little empty boxes they leave on the floor later we'll get to it <laughs> <laughs> all right good people just a recap on the treatment plan for the tahoe she went ahead and did the lower control arms no not lower control arms the lower ball joints the passenger side uh, upper control arm and we pretty much took care of all the oil leaks or may have one little other oil leak. Truck got a lot of miles on it. I'm gonna take a look at the miles by the way too. Um, but guys, I hope you learned something from this uh, because you know, that was just bad business what she went through. Um, I already told her I'm gonna leave the spacers in the rear because it's perfectly a good explanation for this. Um, I don't want to touch it because if I potentially start taking stuff out, they could have could have possibly cross threaded the spacers in there, and that's leaving more work to me for me, um, which cost the customer more money. Um, it could damage the rear oxygen sensors because there wasn't no codes for the oxygen sensors. So I told her, let's just leave it alone until it's time to replace the cats. As you hear now, it's quiet. Um, it has a bad exhaust leak up on first startup, but when metal gets hot, it contracts and seals itself up pretty much. So she may be good. I am concerned about the, um, the carbon monoxide poisoning. Pretty much that's what it is. Carbon monoxide can get inside your vehicle and cause issues. Um, but I already told her all that. Let's take a look at the miles. I flip you around here. 187807 so not bad not bad at all so guys that being said remember if you have exhaust work done and if it's throwing another code for p420 or p430 and they gave it back to you check for those spacers because they're probably trying to get you guys i enjoyed you like always thanks for watching please hit that like and subscribe button it helps this channel out and keeps me motivated to make these great videos see you on the next video alice the car doctor out